Okay, I officially have six o'clock. Thank you all for joining us. Uh, I have two members of the public here at the Village Hall. Um, I will call the May 19th, 2020 board meeting to order. Uh, Sean Heron, would you please lead us in the pledge? The two the Republic, for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, for the and justice. Thank you, Sean. Allison, would you please do roll call? Uh, Trustee Conan? Here. Trustee Walter? Here. Trustee Lindy? Here. Trustee Karen? <coughs> Trustee Heron? Here. Uh, Trustee Cook? Here. And Trustee Montelto. Here. And uh, President Michaels. Here. Thank you. Okay. Uh, again, we have two members of the public here, and then uh, it appears that we have three callers online uh, listening to the board meeting. Okay. Um, I'd like there are no public hearings, no appointments, and presentations. At this time, I'd like to open up public comment. Uh, Ask the gentleman here to uh, start the public comment. Is a key chronology timeline regarding the Crown Development Disconnect Agreement, which was relying on the interchange completion. On October 1st of 2013, the original letter of intent from Sugar Grove to start the phase one study for the interchange with the state. Uh, which had uh, Mark Bailey from Crown was involved in her July 10th email from Brent Eichelberger. In the agreement conditions under letter M, page 19, the agreement becomes null and void if construction work is not awarded within three years of the execution of the agreement. May of 2015, the concept land plan from Crown showing warehouse distribution north of I-88 and east of Illinois 47 with total warehousing on 243 acres with, remaining, with the remaining 549 acres as apartments and single family homes and a small commercial zone. April 3rd, 2018, a proposal to the village board by Walter Matthias to change the comprehensive plan to land use from a commercial corridor designation to a business park, which opens the door to increased warehousing and industrial use, as well as distribution centers. On March 21st, 2018, the motion was passed. On May 15th, 2018, Crown requested an annexation agreement amendment, which reflected the final land use plans of warehousing and distribution. This public hearing was continued Throughout the remainder of 2018, from the original date of May 15th to January 6th of 2019. On November 14th of 2018, Crown tried to entice the bill to resolve the development agreement for funding 988 and 47 interchange project, saying that it is a crucial element in the development plans of the other. They added, should the amended annexation agreement, including the PUD zoning, be executed, they then would be responsible for 100% of the village's obligations for the interchange project. November 20th of 2018, the village approval of inter, the intergovernmental agreement with Illinois Tollway for I-88 and Illinois 47 exchange. Uh, in my opinion, the details of this agreement with Crown should have been completed before this. They have 30 seconds. Okay. It is probable at the point of executing the interchange agreement, the village was in full knowledge of Crown's intentions for their warehousing project and gave up the only real leverage we had. And it could have been stopped by deferring the interchange agreement, which the village was entitled to do, based on the start of the, the, the construction requirements. Um, I just think if we'd have had the agreement hammered out before we did this, we could have saved everybody a lot of okay, time. Okay, three minutes. Thank you. Thank you. 
Fair. All right. Thank you. Uh, any other comments? Uh, we have another comment here by a public um, member. I just wanted to address the issue of um, looking through different things and noticing that there's a possibility that the board might be tabling the action on the Crown Development uh, Disconnect. And at this point, why? Um, why did you even table it? Why did you, you know, wait to the 11th hour and not try to negotiate some kind of change to the plan um, to preserve the fact that this is a critical piece of property within the village and the amount of tax revenue that is going to be lost to the village by losing this property to another community. Okay. Thank you. Okay. We have a number of callers. Uh, any of the uh, public that have called in, would you like to make public comments? Caller. Any callers going once? Any callers that would like to make a public comment going twice? Any callers wanting to make a public comment? Final call. Okay. We'll now close the public comment portion of the agenda. Okay. Um, is there, can I get a motion to approve? Well, uh, under tonight's consent agenda, we have approval of the minutes, approval of the vouchers, approval of the treasurer's report, approval of the liquor license, ordinance requiring rear yard installation for certain utilities, and a resolution approving a proposal for Shirt Grove Center Detention Basin Maintenance. May I get a motion to approve that consent agenda? I'll make the motion. Can you guys hear me? Sean Heron, second. Okay. Any request to remove an item from the consent agenda? Okay. Any requests to remove an item? Hearing none, roll call please, Allison. Trustee Montalto? Aye. Trustee Heron? Aye. Trustee Walter? Aye. Trustee Lundy? Aye. Trustee Cook? Aye. Trustee Conan? Aye. Okay, motion carries, thank you. Okay, may I get a motion to approve the disconnecting of the Crown property? I'll make the motion. Is there a second? I'll second it. Okay, all right, discussion? My discussion at this point is I'm extremely disappointed that there was an audience member that spoke up on the private discussion that happened with other trustees today. How she has any knowledge of that, Marie Johnson, is beyond me. But to think that your voice is not recognized by the rest of us is ridiculous. And the fact that you had a conversation with another board member and then brought that private conversation up on our village board meeting is wholeheartedly inappropriate. Okay. Any other discussion? Okay. Uh, if there's no discussion, we have a motion to disconnect and a second. Uh, roll call. Trustee Montelto? Aye. Trustee Cook?
I think we lost Trusty Cook. He's muted. No, I don't see him on here. Um, let me. Hello, it's it's. Oh, there you go. It's Trusty making... Cook. Yes. I... Okay. Um, hold on one more. Uh, Trusty Heron. Aye. Trustee Walter? Aye. Trustee Lundy? Aye. Trustee Conan? Aye. Okay. Uh, motion carries. All right. Um, Moving on, uh, item 10, uh, discussion items, extending the boundary agreement with the village of Plano. Uh, we've approached the village of Plano to extend the boundary agreement for another 20 years uh, with the agreement line that has been in place in the past, and uh, I believe they've agreed to it. Uh, any questions for staff? This, well, this is the same agreement that uh, or the boundary line that we had before. We're just extending the existing. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, the current agreement is scheduled to expire, I believe, in 2025, and this would. Uh, create a new 20 year period. So, you know, assuming we get it done uh, shortly, it would go out to 2040. And that would coincide pretty closely with the other boundary agreements that we have signed. Okay. There's no discussion. We'll put that on the uh, agenda for next meeting. Uh, Sean, uh, if I may, uh, in this case, yeah. Uh, Plano uh, is preferred to draft the the document. We haven't seen the draft yet, so we're waiting for that. And then, uh, um, Walter, correct me if I'm wrong, but does this require a public hearing that we'll need to schedule? Yeah, we'll have yeah, to we'll schedule, schedule that. that. We'll, we'll do it as soon as possible once we get the uh, draft from them. Okay. Uh, next item agenda is the 160 South Municipal Drive tenant sign. Uh, there's a request to add two tenants uh, to the sign and remove the vacancy wordage. The third tenant has no interest in having their name on the signs. Yeah, this was discussed at a previous meeting where the board uh, directed staff to verify with you know all three tenants their intent. And as you stated, two of them want to be on the sign. The third does not. Uh, the total cost is uh, you know, just under $600 that the two tenants would split. It doesn't provide them with a guarantee of longevity of being on the sign. Um, however, really, the, the only thing we could uh, foresee that would potentially bump them would be, you know, if the village finished out the other half and we wanted to have a, a leasing sign on there. Um, and then we would just you know, figure it out at that point in time. But that's certainly not happening uh, in the immediate future. Okay. Okay. Any discussion on that? Okay. Move forward with that. Uh, professional service agreement for Dugan Road area sanitary sewer extension feasibility study. Uh, Michelle, uh, you have a proposal before us tonight. Yes, and it is basically to look at the potential for servicing primarily Airport Drive and um, the businesses along Bucktail as well as out west there. Just a very conceptual phase of what size pipe do we need and what are the impacts downstream. Okay. Uh, and this is uh, being funded through the TIF district and it is 
been on the long range plan of the village to extend sanitary to Arrow Industrial Park and uh, the businesses and residents out on the west part of the village. So, uh, seems like a good project to take under. Any questions for staff or Michelle? Okay. Uh, re rebuild Illinois grant. Um, Governor Pritzker has uh, put out a request for proposals for different um, or requests for funding for a couple different uh, projects. It's a $25 million grant, which when you hear them talk, I don't think it will go very far uh, because it's open to school districts as well. But uh, staff is proposing the um, build out of uh, the other half of 160 Municipal Drive and the water tower. So uh, both good projects. I did receive a phone call from Senator Oberweiss on Sunday. Uh, he was being asked to submit a request for funding through the state of Illinois uh, through member initiative grants. And he asked which uh, projects I would have be funded, and I put on uh, four hundred thousand dollars or six hundred thousand, I think it is, for the stoplight at Park and Route 47, and the five million dollars for the water tower on the north side of the village to promote economic development. So uh, he was not sure how successful he would be, but uh, he was going to submit those two projects. Um, Sean, if I could just ha add in regard to the Rebuild Illinois grant, um, information uh, continues to come out on you know, what projects are eligible or would have the strongest likelihood. So um, staff would request some flexibility to respond and, you know, in essence, uh, either go with the projects identified or potentially switch it if we find that a different project makes more sense. and. You know, we're working off the village's uh, priority capital projects list as well as our overall CIP program. So it would be, if we did switch anything out, it would be projects that have been previously identified. You know, if it was something completely new, we would certainly come back to the board. But right now, you know, time, it, it's in flux and timing does seem to be a factor. So um, at the moment, I would believe we'll probably need to apply before the next board meeting. And it likely will be the two projects presented tonight, but there is a, a chance that we may believe it makes sense to switch some, to something else. Okay. Was there any other projects that uh, anyone uh, wanted to add or request that we look into adding to this list? What about the uh, Gilman Trail Bridge to Bellevue Park? Uh, I did not. Oh, go ahead. I was going to say we we can take a look at that to see if it was eligible. Most of these are they're looking for what they're calling you know shovel ready, which okay. Uh, you know, even the ones we're proposing, um, you know, you know, it's going to be tough because they're looking for some action within 90 days, and that's the oh, okay. one. That, uh, phase one engineering is before IDOT. We're expecting mm -hmm. uh, phase one approval sometime in June, but we don't have that yet, and so that one. You know, we can take another look at it to see if it would fit this criteria. If it does, we could certainly include it, but I don't want to get anybody's hopes up. No, I didn't know. If, if there were other options that we needed to look at, I was just throwing that one out because it's a little bit different than a stoplight, which, I, trust me, I very much want, um, in the water tower. I was just looking for different um, areas of projects. I Heidi, I thought that would be a good project as well, since there's multiple governmental bodies participating. Mm -hmm. and thought it might catch the attention of the selection committee, but um, I think, as Brent pointed out, I don't think it's shovel ready at this point. That's in, understood. Bad. In addition, they're also looking for the economic impact as well, and how many jobs it will create, that sort of thing, or potential jobs is another just to score higher on the list. Okay. Okay. Well, we'll proceed with those two projects and if uh, information changes, we can contact the board. 
All right, and then uh, the, the revised board meeting had on the agenda item E, road construction agreement with Rich Harvest Farms. Um, hopefully everybody saw that revision and the memo that came out this afternoon. Again, this is just discussion, so if there are concerns, we can address them uh, by the next board meeting or vote on it. But uh, this is a project that uh, Senator Oberweis has worked out with uh, Rich Harvest Farms to put in a left turn lane on Granite Road for uh, safe traffic movement, and uh, it needs to go through a municipality, which for the conduit uh, in the Rich Harvest would be responsible for any funds uh, above the $200,000 grant. Any questions for staff on that? Okay. All right. Brent, was there anything else to come before the village board? Uh, nothing during the regular meeting, but we do have a request for closed session to discuss personnel. Okay. And to go into closed session, uh, everybody will have to log out, and then just board members will be able to attend, and it will be through a, a different link through uh, gotomeeting.com. Okay. Uh, any questions for staff? Tony, any reports of flooding? You're muted. There you go. There we go. Um, we just had a couple uh, instances of uh, Hankus Road uh, right by uh, uh, Turtle Cove and Pressbury there, uh, where Lake Pressbury drains to the golf course. The water was coming over the road a couple of times, but it didn't uh, require uh, closing the road. We just put water on pavements out there. Uh, and we're not aware of any other flooding uh, occurrences uh, in the village. Okay. Good. Uh, and project, uh, progress at uh, 47 and Bliss Road is moving along? It was doing great until we had all this rain, so now they've uh, suffered uh, several uh, rain days. Okay. I did get out and drive Camp Dean Road. It's nice to have that new pavement on it. So thank you for getting that done so quickly. You're welcome. Any other questions for staff? Okay. Uh, trustee reports. Uh, Jen, anything to report? Uh, just that today is uh, Joe Wolf's 86th birthday, so if you give him a ring uh, and wish him a happy birthday, but that's all I've got. Okay, thank you. That's good to know. That's probably why he's not here to give an airport report and celebrate. So. Uh, Heidi, <laughs> anything to report? Uh, no, nothing to report. You'll be happy going to the Girl Scout camp uh, with Camp Dean Road being repaid. Now we have to get on uh, the private property yeah. owner to fill in the potholes. Yeah, Camp, uh, camp Dean is, uh, they're not having the Girl Scout camp this summer, so. Oh. Okay. I know, COVID. That means the road will last a year longer at least that way, so. Yeah, they might have some events or whatever there, but their their main uh, summer camp there they they chose not to for safety reasons. Makes sense. Okay, uh, Rick, nothing. Hey, Brian, uh, nothing for me. Okay. Sean, is officially out. Uh, tomorrow, we really loud. Uh, one of the things that uh, I think some of the district administrators are frustrated with is there's a lot of uh, the rumor mill is kicking for uh, how how the school district is planning on starting next year. Um, the rumor is that that decision's already been made. 
they've got, I think, 15 different scenarios at this point, um, and none of them is one that they've decided on yet. They're taking in information, and they'll make a decision when it's closer to that time. But uh, it's it's pretty crazy with uh, with all the different types of scenarios. But we'll figure something out. Okay. All right. Chad? We just had a lovely parade go past the neighborhood here for the eighth graders. Uh, tonight was going to be their eighth grade promotion ceremony. And instead, um, some local folks came through and just had a little parade. It was really neat. So it's kind of fun to see the different things people are doing to make up for some of this, um, some of these cancellations. So kind of makes you feel good. Um, nothing else for me. Okay. All right. Uh, President's report. Again, I, I did talk to Senator Overwise about the two projects. So hopefully, uh, we do get some member initiative money and uh, can put it into some projects in town. And then um, there was a, a press release this week that Route 47 will be resurfaced from I-88 down to Route 30, uh, roughly seven miles. That work is supposed to start in June and end in November. There will be uh, limited lane closures with flaggers, things like that. But, uh, Again, it'll be good to have that done. Uh, 47's in need of repair and uh, going through town and especially getting that median improved on the stretch 47 from Galena to Route 30 is uh, important. So good to see the progress being made there. Okay, uh, if there's nothing else, um, may I get a motion to adjourn to closed session for exception of the Open Meetings Act? not take action and adjourn from there. I'll make that motion, but I have a quick question for Allison before we close out. Um, I'm looking at the closed session link, and when I'm trying to open it on my iPad, it's just not doing anything. Is it because we're currently tied to a go-to-meeting thing? It, it, it could be. Um, I haven't opened up the meeting yet. I can't right. open up the meeting until I close one. That's that's what oh, I'm asking. That that's yeah. probably why it's not working. Okay. Right. Just in case you lose us for some reason, you know what's going on. Yeah. If you in case you lose, just call me. Okay. Um, on my desk phone seven two zero seven. All right. Three nine one seven two zero seven, and we'll we'll do our best. Okay. So we have a first. May I get a second? Second. Second by Trustee Cook. Roll call, please. Uh, Trustee Montalto. Aye. Trustee Cook. Aye. Trustee Walter. Aye. Trustee Lindy. Aye. Trustee Conan. Aye. And Trustee Heron. Aye. Okay, we'll start closed session at 6:30. Gives us about two minutes. Thank you all. Thank you everyone. For